All right, now that we got rid of all the poor people, welcome to the paid DLC for Scrollies. Welcome. You deserve this. You are a fine person. You enjoy the finer things in life. And frankly, that's where all the money that Scrollies makes is going. Welcome and thank you. Hello, patron. Thank you for subscribing to the Scrollies membership DLC expansion pack premium content edition deluxe here we don't have to worry about what all those pores think about our opinions so we're going to talk about a little bit more and how fitting is it for us on the specific paid episode this paid addition to the regular scrollies that we talk about downloadable content squat cobbler have you ever paid for downloadable content i have so much money to get downloadable content now thanks to the scrollies membership tier plus supreme edition we don't tell the free people but squat and i live in a freaking mansion now that dungeon you thought we were in at the end of the last regular episode psh, that was our gold plated suite on our penthouse floor yeah audio right now he's got the finest fruits and cheeses and he's dunking them both into our fondue fountain and into the chocolate fountain audio you live in large buddy enjoy that yeah as a matter of fact audio oh oh, oh audio no don't stick your whole face in it oh audio it's disgusting Ugh. Oh, oh, we're going to have to get new chocolate now, but hey, that, that'll be no problem with all this cash we're raking in. Squat, we'll just use the backup fountains. It's fine. Oh, you're right. We, I forgot we have like 10 more in the storage unit. We'll just have our uh, have our transport driver just go and pick some up for us uh, at the end of the episode. Not a big deal. All right, strap in. Get yourself a nice glass of Chablis because we're talking about downloadable content. Something that uh, I guess I'm a fan of now, now that we're so rich. And I've seen the beginning of it. Squat Cobbler, what was your first memory of, of downloadable content? Man, you know, I used to think it was such a stain on the games industry. But now that we have all this cash to blow, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, pay, I'll pay for the same game three times over. That's no, no big deal. <laughs> uh, my first memory with the DLC, as it's called, was uh, probably StarCraft Brood War um, expansion pack. To the original game so so not quite dlc but uh i guess in a sense it was as far as like actual console dlc goes uh well let's just say the wii couldn't really support it <laughs> pre uh, eShop didn't didn't quite have the means but uh I, I think mario galaxy 2 was intended as dlc yeah on the wii and then uh my actual first experience with it proper on the wii u was uh not batman arkham city because that had that was a game of the year edition that had everything in it already from the start. Hyrule Warriors? Yeah, probably not. Probably before that, but that, definitely Hyrule Warriors was an experience with DLC. I think actually, as I think about it, Arkham City was probably the first game that I really bought and invested DLC into. Because if you remember, that game came out. I, I bought it right when it came out. I just had a new PS3 and everything, and I remember they had some sort of collaboration with. Nas, the energy drink, where you could get like some free skins. So technically, I went to the gas station near me as this poor, poor college student just got back from Guatemala, barely had a dollar to my name, and I bought a Nas energy drink just so I could get the code, just so I could get uh, Sinestro Core Batman. I think my favorite skin in that probably, probably the Batman Beyond. That's really cool. Yeah, L looks like it's straight out of the cartoon. But uh, the Batman Incorporated is my favorite default, uh, or I guess base Batman design in Arkham City. Yeah. Oh wait, you know what? I just realized you're you're right. So I got you get uh, you get Terry McGinnis, you get the Batman Beyond for the Nas drink, and uh, shout out my friend Stu, actually friend of Sports Game Guy. He gave me his Green Lantern code. And that's how I got Sinestro Core Batman. Ah, oh, like the Green Lantern movie? Uh-huh. Oh, man. Yeah, I remember that. Ryan Reynolds, pre-Deadpool. <laughs> yep, 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 <laughs> Basically yep. killed his career. Yeah, that was a movie. <laughs> but he, he rose back from the ashes. But I do remember pre not too long after, like it was a little while, that they came out with like the uh, Harley Quinn DLC and the Nightwing DLC. Yes. It's a shame they didn't come up with a whole Nightwing campaign for you. Oh, God, that would have been amazing. Hey, Gotham Knights is right around the corner, Ratnado. Soon you will have your full playthrough of a Nightwing game. Oh, I, I can't wait. It's going to be really good. But uh, yeah, that's that was my first, I think, 
the first time when I was like, okay, fine, I'll buy some DLC. Before that, I was very against it. And it didn't hurt that I didn't have a lot of money to spend anyways. You know, I, I was definitely aware of DLC before that, but often the consoles I had would just forego the whole DLC package. I would just get the base game and that would be it. You know. <laughs> so uh, when when the Wii U actually started supporting it, I was I was pleased to finally have access to it. And yet... I was displeased. I was displeased that it was becoming so commonplace and that so uh, so many major features were starting to be locked behind it. Yeah. Little did we know, folks. Little did we know what was ahead. But I think, you know, I think once upon a time, uh, DLCs, not such a bad thing. Uh, the expansion packs of a lot of PC releases, such as StarCraft, such as uh, Tycoon series, Roller Coaster Tycoon, that was a big one I was into. Yeah. They basically felt like entire games, whole campaigns, new units, new skins. I remember that Brood Wars really did feel like another StarCraft game. Like it was, there was a lot of like campaign story mm -hmm. that was really, and it was really good too. I remember thinking like the sports game guy was the one who bought like the battle chest at that point. This is 97 or 90, this is oh, 99 probably or almost 2000 by that point. So you get the whole battle chest with everything. And uh, man, like, yeah, I remember after finishing regular StarCraft and be like, there's more but wait there's more yeah it basically doubles the entire campaign um imagine imagine if a dlc came out today that basically just doubled the content you had yeah. and, and i don't and i don't mean complete the whole package i mean take the whole package and then give you an entire another whole package yeah man such a such a distant memory such a such an ancient ancient notion uh yeah not not like that anymore i think now now we're lucky if we if we get a premium edition that has the entire game in it, a la Sonic Origins with its animated menus that you gotta download as DLC. <laughs> digital deluxe, right? Ugh, terrible. Well, well, there's the digital deluxe. There's the there's the pre-order bonus, and there's the the premium edition that has everything. Yep, yep, exactly. And if you're lucky and the game's actually good, you'll get a game of the year edition later that year. It's the same price, but already has everything like it should have been from the start. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, and I was going to say, to me, DLC has almost been not much of an issue, except for a short time between like 2010 to, I don't know, let's say 2014, when I, you know, got a full time job and could like actually had a little disposable income because it always fell into two camps. First of all, it was a game that I loved, that I was super excited about, and I had no problem buying DLC or buying this stuff because like I have to have this game. I've got to have this. And there wasn't, I guess, a lot at the time of those types of things. But say, for example, like, uh, I don't know, Smash Bros. Smash 4 on Wii U, when Cloud came out, pfft, don't even worry. Of course I'm going to buy that. Don't worry, I'm going to buy this, you know, those things. Or the second camp, like you're saying, I have so many video games. I have so little time. By the time everything actually came out, I might as well just wait for the Ultimate Edition with everything, the game of the year edition. There aren't a lot of games that I bought immediately when they came out. Cause like, I'll just wait for the full edition. Yeah, that's definitely where I'm at now. I, I definitely wait until I see what's offered a year later, or, you know, once once the DLC is complete, the season pass is over. So you get the impression that you have everything. I remember uh, I remember as well, Smash Wii U, uh, Smash 3DS. I would just buy every single thing in it because I wasn't sure maybe I'd use that character. Maybe I'd want to play on that stage. With Ultimate, I, I've pretty much only stuck to the ones I actually like and care about. <laughs> never got Pyramithra, never got uh, uh, Joker. I did get Banjo, though. Uh -huh. <laughs> Minecraft Steve, of course. You have to. You have to. But um, I remember I remember whenever I'd play on PlayStation, um, especially, it seemed like there was always some exclusive, exclusive feature. Uh, the Batman 1960s skin in Arkham Knight uh, was a big one that came to mind. I'm like, well, I guess it's only here on PlayStation, so I got to get all the DLC on PlayStation. And then a few years later, the season pass was like five bucks on Steam and the game was like 15 bucks. So I was like, well, I could have saved myself about $80 there altogether. But here you go. But that's the thing, though, is I think that uh, I mean, it rarely gets me because if it is a game where I I really care about and I really want to play everything immediately, like I did with Smash Bros, where it's like, no, I want to play as Joker. I want to play as Cloud. I want to play as Sephiroth or whatever is going on. I don't think I ever regret those. And maybe that says more about my bad spending habits <laughs> than anything else. <laughs> but uh, there's very few times that that's happened 
or you know i i don't buy as many games as i used to until they're super discounted Sure, sure. Yeah, I pretty much always buy stuff on sale now. But the issue with Smash in particular, and I guess it's becoming more of a common problem, is it's you get like a season pass, but it's unknown. You, you get the character pack, but it's a bunch of question marks after after Joker. You don't really you don't really know who you're getting, but you just pay for it up front. And then it's just, I guess, whatever they release. And sure, you can wait. But at that point, you've already missed out on all the hype and everyone's gotten good at the new character. Yeah. So uh, I, if they make another Smash, which I mean, we all know they will in time. I, I hope that's something that they, they maybe do without the, the, the character pack, or at least they make it the same price as buying all the characters individually. So that way you don't have to worry about, oh, what if I don't like half the characters that come out in the pack? Yeah. But, I don't know. That sounds... Are you doing an impression of somebody who doesn't pay for the Scrollies premium? You know what? I, I wouldn't dare... I wouldn't dare cast shade on the majority of our listeners, but let's just say <laughs> I'll appreciate a little more those of you that are listening to this now because you forked the big bucks to be part of the, the squad, to be part of the Scrolly squad. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't want you guys to feel like you're like them. That you're like the poor listeners who listen to this for free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, Scrolly Squad. That's that's written with dollar signs. Just so yeah, you don't yeah, know. yeah. Nope. Here, here. I'll, I'll make sure I write it out in the description so that way that only the the premium members who are actually listening to this get to see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they don't get confused when they, when they write out Squirrely Squad from now on. Yeah, exactly. And for for just five dollars more, we're going to send you your Squirrely Squad patch, day one pre order. And for another ten dollars, we'll send you a jacket to put the patch on. <laughs> That's a really cheap jacket. <laughs> well, hey, we're not a huge podcast just yet. Maybe, maybe soon we'll we'll get the expensive North Face. But for now, we're making do with the custom print jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Audio, keep working. Look at him iron those things on. They look great. Mm, you're doing great audio. DLC, man. I don't know. I, I think the, I mean, part of it is just like we talked about in the episode that uh, they want to see what they can get away with. They want to see if they can get the money away from us. And I, I guess to me, it's almost not a problem because either I see the inherent value of what it adds or I don't pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. If it's something like, I mean, if it's something like cosmetics, I mean, I'm a sucker for skins, so I'd, I'd probably go with it if I like the skin. When it's something like a campaign, I'm like, mm, I don't know. So either I end up watching it on YouTube to see if it's actually any good, but then I, I've spoiled it for myself. Or I just go for it and hope that it's actually enough content to warrant the price, <laughs> which I think for the most part it usually is. Uh, the Spider-Man DLCs, they, they had a bunch of extra missions, extra campaigns there at the end that was only through DLC, but it felt like a complete package. It didn't feel like it was just uh, hiding stuff that should have been in the game regardless. It felt like the game was whole and it was actually something extra. So uh, that's one of the better examples of them, I guess, not locking behind stuff that was already done. Yeah. But it feels like that's less and less than norm right exactly and i i think i've been burned a couple times and that's kind of led me to where i am of like i can live without i've got so many games to play that i don't have to worry too much if something comes up and i'm like either yes i really want it it's like eh, i can wait a year for that uh specifically like the day one bonuses uh, i bought the last of us on playstation 3 and i don't i don't know if i got like the pre-order bonuses with it but i remember thinking like whatever they said oh it was like skill points or something and i'm like i didn't need this it's kind of dumb that they 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 do that to like entice you to do it but you don't need it so so it's something you can actually apply during gameplay yeah 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 so you could get like it gave you like an extra two points towards like uh carrying more items or whatever whatever it was i don't remember crafting more things more quickly or holding more things and to me that that's an example of something that is kind of egregious for like a pre pre-order bonus yeah, that is that is a little silly. Last of Us did have a actual DLC campaign, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With uh, Ellie, it was really good. I yeah. did like that a lot. Yeah, I've, I've heard a lot of good things about it. Hey, maybe, maybe, maybe that'll be com- included in the complete package on uh, PS5. Ooh. With that being remastered, that would be great. I mean, the game, the old game, still stands up. Like, I have it on PlayStation Four, and it's still really good. So, 
we'll see. But uh, that and also I think PS3 for me as a gamer was just a, a learning time learning what I needed, what I didn't, because I remember I pre-ordered Watch Dogs. Oh my gosh, Ubisoft. Yeah, do we want to talk about them since their old DLC will no longer be downloadable oh in, in just a little bit because they're taking off their online authenticators? Insane. Insane. What What the heck? Like, you buy something, and sure, you may not have it forever, but, like, you won't have it at all now. You're losing it even though you already have it. <laughs> yep. yep. Way to go, way to go, yeah. Watch Dogs, Watch Dogs is a pale GTA clone if I ever played one, but uh, yeah, that, that that did have some DLC missions as well. I never even finished the full game, so I never even got around to buying that stuff, but... It, it was so bad. I don't know, maybe they fixed it, but I remember I got it, and like, I was telling sports game guy, Teo Dafa, shout out Teo Dafa, I was telling him, like, this game's gonna change the world, it's so cool, look at all this stuff you can do. It's not just combat, you can do all, you can hack things, and I pre-ordered... I think I have like the steel case and like the the like mask thing that came with it. And I played it for all of like five hours and I was like, screw this. This game sucks. I don't like this. And uh, oh my gosh, I was burnt out and I never that was the first strike. Or maybe that was the second strike. The third strike was Beyond Two Souls. Ooh, one of the Quantum Dream games. That's Esquire's cup of tea. Yes, he, he would like that. Well, he watches he watches the whole game on YouTube first, and then he plays it after that. <laughs> what? Why? Esquire Esquire is a very curious uh, xenomorph, folks. We don't we don't quite understand it. Yeah, that's strange. Very strange. But yeah, Beyond Two Souls. Remember, I got it though, and that's another game where I pre-ordered. And I got the steel case, and it was it was an okay game, but it wasn't what I thought it was going to be either. So. That's when I stopped doing pre-orders. <laughs> yeah, pre- pre-order deals are just silly. Like, especially when they lock a skin behind it. Like, okay, okay, be that way. Um, but if it's something just cosmetic like that, I guess it's not as big a deal as if it's actually, like, content <laughs> or points or whatever. Like, I, I don't know. I, I feel like that's sort of starting to slip by the wayside now, but you're getting these other weird pre-order bonuses, like having animated menus in Sonic Origins or <laughs> like like it feels like they're just segmenting the game into like different versions and you can buy I guess the full version for a little more but at that point why not just make the whole game a little more money like I I don't understand it Plaid Man do you understand it Plaid probably doesn't understand it either yeah yeah he's just going back to air Sonic Air he's just going back to Sonic 3 Air which you can buy with the Steam version of Sonic 3 and Knuckles which uh, I, I did happen to buy around the time the Sonic 2 movie came out not knowing that it was going to be delisted within the month wow good timing on my part there yeah that's really lucky so you have them downloaded and everything I have Air downloaded and everything yeah it's uh I, I played the first level uh Angel Island Act 1 and 2 but uh I mean that's pretty much the norm with old Sonic games so I play the first two worlds first yeah. two zones sorry I didn't get my terminology right the first two zones <laughs> and uh, then, then I kind of uh, fall off but yeah I, I'm looking forward to maybe trying out Sonic 3 in its entirety at some point uh, just for just for Plaid Man yeah it's his, it's his big old number f- one fave yeah you, you want to know uh, you know what I'm going to get a little bit of a rant rant NATO if that's okay oh boy rant NATO rant NATO fan you listening you ready <laughs> the, the one Rantanado fan out there. Um, so I think the thing that makes me more angry than anything else with like digital deluxe and bonus and blah, 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 is the fact that all these digital ones also come with an art book and the soundtrack. Oh, yeah. Because when am I ever going to like, oh, I sure love, would love to listen to the Ghost of Tsushima soundtrack. Let me just bust out my PlayStation 5. <laughs> Well, that's, yeah, that's something where it's like, just put it on Spotify or, or release it on iTunes and you can just download it. Yeah. <laughs> Why is it exclusive to this version? Yeah. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just going to go up on YouTube anyway, so. Exactly. Unless you really want to listen to it on your console as a player, like uh, going back to Smash Ultimate, um, I remember they, they included a mode where you could basically use it as a glorified MP3 player with the soundtrack there in sleep mode. <laughs> Let me tell you, I was I was I was furious, furious listening to those who fight further. And uh, what was the other song they had? The Final Fantasy. They had two Final Fantasy seven songs for five or six years. 
Yep, yep. When Cloud got introduced, it was it was just the two, and then finally Sephiroth introduced more of Cloud's music. <laughs> oh my gosh! And One Wind Angel, the best video game song ever, as noted in your Spotify playlist, right? Yeah, right. Know. Wait, where is it? Where's One Wing Angel, Ratnado? <laughs> it's number twenty-eight. Ah! <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I I think that uh, DLCs aren't always terrible, but. Most of the time they are, and I think I've always invested when it seemed like it it, it was enough. Um, Smash Bros. I like having all the characters just because whenever anybody comes to play on it, they're just like, "Oh, you've got everybody sick! I've been wanting to try this. I've been wanting to see this." And to me, that's really fun. Just the sense of completeness. And I mean, I can't really talk about being frugal in that sense because I did buy. Super Smash Bros. The Collector's Edition and digital because I knew when is there a time that I'm not going to want Smash Bros. on my Switch? I always want it available. You always want it available, whether it's on card or on SD card. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> I, I I do have to say, Ratnado, I think, I think we're basically uh, settled in for the long haul with these segmented uh, complete releases when it comes to AAA games. I, I feel like that's just kind of the norm now. Like we've been seeing that for about 10 years. But yeah. I think DLC shines uh, still when you consider the indie games, yeah. the indie market, because it feels like um, Shovel Knight, for example, was released as a full game. And then I don't know if you want to count these as separate games or as DLC, but they basically had entire new releases yeah. under that banner. And then they released them all in a big pack. I know uh, Celeste also did something similar with a. Uh, B-side, C-side levels. But um, yeah, indie games are really continuing in in that old spirit of DLC where it's providing you more in addition to what you already have as a complete package. I don't know. I guess DLC to me is just very complex. Back to the days when it was things like, I mentioned it in Elder Scrolls Oblivion, they did this thing where you can get horse armor for like $5 or something like that. And everybody laughed at them. Nobody bought it. And I thought that was it. I really thought that was it. It's like, no, they got to include everything in the game. And I wonder how many gamers out there have grown up without that. And now they're just like, nope, this is how it is. You got to buy this. You got to buy this. You have to buy this edition. And then you have to upgrade with this and the digital edition. And to me, that's kind of sad. It is sad. And, you know, this might circle back to what we were saying in uh, part one. We talked about EA Star Wars Battlefront 2, the, the loot boxes. Maybe they just realized that they did too much at once. And so they've just gradually, gradually inched their way there to where we are now. And it's uh, it's just the norm, but it got that way slowly. It didn't all happen at once like it would have with, oh, you need cosmetic horse armor back in 2000. So yeah. people became a little more accustomed to it when, when it uh, was on the PS3, 360 digital marketplaces um, right. over the span of seven, eight years. Yo, shout out to all the Sims players. Isn't that crazy for all the DLC and packs and everything that they add on? Man, is EA just the worst at this? <laughs> I just finished up uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order last week, and it felt like that really wasn't that bad. It was a complete package. Yeah. Uh, there, there were a couple of added uh, like lightsaber colors and, and outfits, but I mean, aside from that, didn't really seem like it was that bad on DLC. But everything else EA releases, it's just... Horribly, horribly segmented and walled off behind different release packs. The Sims is just, man, you know, Shraxa plays uh, plays The Sims for uh, for my farm, my farm with my friends. And Zach J underscore shout out had to gift her the dogs and cats pack because it was a DLC pack. It wasn't in the game. That's, it's wild. That's wild. And it, it wasn't. I mean, it wasn't like a full fledged game, but it was enough that I was like, geez you have to buy like 20 of these things to get the entire game. And I guess most people would probably look at that and say, well, I only want this. I only want that. You got to buy the game and then you got to buy the game again in parts. It's, it's egregious. It's horrible, but it's the way it is. Unfortunately, I don't, I don't see a change in Ratnado. Do you? Unfortunately, no. And I always say this, like I wish gamers could just be a little more, uh, a unified front we could say, you know, I, I know that was like a big thing in Reddit back in the day, like 2013, 2014, where they're like this, they're doing this terrible, terrible thing. And then it breaks all, you know, and everybody's upset. And oh, that's terrible. We can't let this happen. And then it, the game would break records for sales. You can be keyboard warriors all you want, but, but at the end of the day, you're still going to buy it and you're going to hate yourself for it. <laughs> so, 
that's that's the sad truth and uh i i yeah i don't see it changing either i guess all i'm thinking is that you just gotta buy what's true to you and uh vote with your wallet yeah personally what i i I don't buy anything else that's on sale at this point and unless it's a nintendo game because i mean those never go on sale but everything will go on sale eventually if you just have a little patience Hey, I got Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga uh, <laughs> with all its DLC for less than I would have if I just bought the standard edition when it released. So anything's possible, folks. Anything's possible. Patience, everybody. Patience out there. But uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for this. Thanks to all of you premium Scrollies subscribers. And, you know, this is we're actually going to give you a free DLC right now, which is just to say, hey, we hope you have a great day. Yeah, we hope you're having a good one. Uh, just keep in mind, that's only for you. That's not for the standard listeners who, who who listen on our normal feed. This will not be going out on our normal feed. This is only going to go out on the premium uh, super secret link that only you guys have. So, uh, yeah, keep this super secret, guys. And, uh, yeah, have a great day. All right. Thanks for checking out this DLC of a DLC episode. I have been Team Ratnado, of course, with the co-host. It is I, Squat Cash Money. Squat Cash Money. He's, uh, I thought he was going to say squirt. That's fine that you didn't. All right, everyone. We'll, we'll see you next time, uh, much sooner than next week because, you know, you, you guys get daily releases, unlike those free folks. So, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll catch you later. Bye. See you later. Do, do you have any outros you want to you want to test out Ratnado, or is that only for the free episodes where you can experiment some? Okay, how about this? Ba da ba ba ba, Ratnado. I like it.